Amy from Peekaboo Pattern Shop and today I'm going to show you how to sew a reversible swimsuit. This pattern is available at peekaboopatternshop.com. It's in girls sizes 3 months up to 12 years. This is the size 12 in the basic one piece option uh, and I also included the optional flutters on the shoulders. The pattern does include an option for flutters on the legs as well. This pattern is fully reversible, so you get two suits in one. Here's the opposite side of this suit. And one thing I love about this pattern is that it's completely seamless, so if you have kids who are sensitive at all to having seams on the inside of their clothing, there's nothing to rub or irritate, and you don't even have to top stitch if you don't want to. You I left the legs without top stitching on this one, so it's really comfortable to wear, easy to sew, it takes the same amount of time to sew as a regular swimsuit, but in the end you end up getting two swimsuits in one. So here's the one piece option, and then it also comes in a two piece. You need a couple of those as well. So here's the top. The top comes in a tankini length or in a cropped length, and then here's the bottoms and I included the optional flutters on this pair of bottoms. And what I love about doing a two-piece set is that it gives you so many options. So you can end up with four different combos that you can do. You can do all the same fabric on both sides. You can flip your top. It gives you a lot of different choices. And kids just love the mix and match possibilities with this pattern. And then in addition to the one-piece and two-piece swimsuit, it also comes with a color-blocked option. Sorry, this swimsuit is a little wrinkly because it just came out of the wash. My daughter's been wearing this one a lot. So this is the color-blocked front, and that comes, um, this option is available in the one-piece and the two-piece option. I just made solid bottoms with this suit but there is the option to have the color blocking continue on to the front as well. So that's all the options that comes with this pattern. We're gonna go ahead and get started with the assembly for the one piece swimsuit first, which is the one I have right here. And you're gonna to wanna to watch the one piece assembly even if you're making the two piece swimsuit because a lot of the instructions are the same. And after I go over the one piece, I'll go over the differences for the two piece so that you can sew that one as well. Let's get started. We're gonna start with the assembly of the one piece reversible swimsuit. I already have my pieces cut out. Since this pattern is reversible, you will need to cut two of every piece, one in each fabric. So here's my back and my two fabrics. And then I've also cut out the front piece in two different fabrics. And this is the size 12, which is the largest size in the pattern. So you'll have two backs, two fronts, and then the pattern also includes optional flutters to go along the legs or along the shoulders. I'm just doing the shoulder flutters this time, so I've cut two of those as well. And our first step is to sew the shoulder seams together with right sides together. So you'll need one front piece and then the corresponding back piece in that same fabric. These will be sewn together with a quarter inch seam allowance. So you can do front and back together and then you'll repeat the same thing in your second fabric. I sewed together the shoulder seams front and back of both my fabric layers and now we're ready to move on to the shoulder flutters and these are totally optional. With the flutters you do have to use a solid swim fabric otherwise uh, you'll end up with your flutter would be like print on one side and the wrong side showing when you reverse the suit. So you need to choose a fabric that looks the same on both sides. So I'm using a solid yellow for this suit because it matches both of my fabrics. That way my flutters will look cute either way the suit is worn. So you can sew a basting stitch along the curved edge of the flutter. So I went ahead and did that already. And then you're going to gather it to match your shoulder in between. The pattern piece has a marked dot 
to show you how big it needs to be. So I've marked that here and here. You can either gather it first and then pin it on or and adjust it, or you can pin the center first and the ends and then gather it. So I'm going to go ahead and pin my center to the shoulder seam and then gather it. So you just pull on one of the threads, make sure you pull on either the top or bottom, stick with the same one on both sides, otherwise your threads will lock up. And just pull on that to create our gathers here. And I want it to be gathered just enough for the end to match up with this dot. And we'll have to smooth these out. So I'm going to do that on both sides, get the flutters pinned in place here, and then I'm going to go baste them to the swimsuit. And then next we're going to sew the neckline. I have the flutters basted to the shoulders of the swimsuit now. This is what they'll look like when it's finished. So now we're ready to go ahead and sew on the neckline. And what I like to do is pin these flutters out of the way while I'm sewing the neckline to make sure I don't accidentally catch them in the seam. So you can just kind of fold them up and pin them out of the way. You don't have to do this, but if you're worried about sewing over your flutters, this is a good way to make sure you don't accidentally get them caught in there. So lining up the necklines, make sure you have the front and the back, you know, you match up front to front, which along the neckline, they can look pretty similar, but if you're making the one piece, it's easy to see that you have it matched up. And if you're making the tankini, you need to just double check and make sure you have the neckline matched up and it's not wonky. You don't want to match up front to back or it's not going to line up right. I'm going to start out with the shoulder seams. And if you've used a serger, I like to put my seams in opposite directions. So I had this seam going towards the front on my stripe layer. So on this one, I'm going to do it towards the back. This makes it a bit less bulky. Put that together, and then I'm going to do the same thing over on this shoulder. Just clip the whole neckline together. We are going to leave a hole in the center back so we can turn the suit right side out when we're done. So I'm going to remind myself that between these two, I need to leave a little gap. Just like a one and a half inch gap is enough. Swimsuit fabric's really stretchy, so it's pretty easy to turn the suit right side out, even if you don't leave a very big hole. If you are making the tankini top, the only difference for this step is that you don't need to leave a hole right there, because instead you'll be leaving a hole in the bottom edge. So once you have your neckline all pinned together and you've made sure your flutters are safely out of the way, you're just gonna sew all the way around leaving you one gap in the center back. Now that the neck is sewn, we're gonna turn it right side out and move on to the arms. So you can just flip it right through the neck hole. We're not gonna top stitch the seam yet. You can top stitch the neckline later if you want to, but there's no reason to do it at this point. Go ahead and turn it this way. And we're gonna finish the arms using the burrito roll method. If you've ever made a knit sleeveless dress that has a lined bodice, it probably uses this exact same method. So I'm gonna start on the left. I'm gonna start rolling it up. Just like this. And then I'm gonna bring Bring this over. So you'll have your flutter in between here. I'm gonna, I should have moved this pin earlier so I can get to that seam. I'm gonna match this up along the edges. Mommy, can I have a snack? Yes, you can go get a snack. Sorry, that's my four year old. He's home from preschool for the afternoon. So we're gonna keep pinning this all along the arm openings. So 
So when you pin this, make sure you don't catch like any part of your flutter that doesn't belong in there. You only want the edge that you've already basted down. This all pinned, and then I'm just going to go sew right along this edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. So now that we've sewn along the arm opening, and just turn it right side out. So just reach right up here, pull it right side out. Can you open the rock for a bit? Yeah, bring it over here. All right, so we'll get this turned right side out. Sorry, we're having a little guest appearance here from Cheez Its. <laughs> there you go. Use a bowl, please. Okay, so after you get it turned right side out, See, mine's flipped around here. There we go. So you're starting to get an idea of how this is gonna look once it's finished. So then we're gonna do the exact same thing to finish the other arm. So I'm just gonna flip it over, and we're gonna roll again. So here's my finished side that we already finished. So that's the side we're gonna roll now. Roll it up. Grab the under layer and flip it around. And make sure you don't catch like this edge of your flutter. And then I'm gonna pin it. So make sure you pin your shoulders together. Just going to do exactly like we did on the other side. So I'm going to keep pinning down here and then go sew it. We have the other side sewn now, so we're going to turn it right side out again, just like we did before. And just reach your hand up in there and pull it through. And even though these shoulder seams are not that big, the swim is really stretchy and it'll just pull right through. So now we're going to move on to the side seams. So I'm going to spread this out and then you're just going to bring, this is the front down here, sorry it doesn't all fit on camera. We're going to bring this up so that we can match up the side seams. So this is my front and the surfboards and the back and the surfboards and I'm just going to lay them together and if you've made a lined dress bodice you probably used the same method before. I'm going to just turn this so it doesn't go out of the camera view. So I'm going to clip together. I lost my clips. I'm use the pins. And pin these together along the edge. So just two layers. And do front to back in the same fabric. Got them both sides. And then we're going to do the same thing for our other layer of the suit. So if you flip this over, we have one layer still hanging out under there. So now I have the stripes lined up. So here's the striped back and the striped front. This is the other layer of my suit. So make sure you line up. Here's the bottom of the seam that we did in the last step. So we make sure those match up. This is like the armpit of the suit right here. So make sure you line that up and then we'll just keep pinning these edges together all the way down on both sides and then you can sew the side seams for both layers all in one step. So I'm gonna, here's my stripe fabric so that's like your main fabric and then down, continue down to your accent fabric, front to back, should be getting sewn together. And you're gonna do that on both sides. The side seams are now sewn together. So at this point, we're gonna move on to the legs. If you're making the tankini top up until this point, the assembly has been almost completely the same. I'll show how to finish up the tankini top later. We, at this point, all you'd have left is the bottom edge. So for the one piece, 
We're gonna leave it inside out. Just bring, flip this over. And we're gonna line up the bottom edges. So move your, move your front pieces out of the way. I'm just gonna tuck them up in there for now and line up your two different fabric layers along the bottom edge. And then you're just gonna start pinning together on the leg opening. So right now I'm pinning the backs of the leg openings together in my two different fabrics. You're not gonna go across the crotch seam right now. We just line those up to make sure that we have the right pieces together. So I'm gonna start clipping along here. And once you get up to your side seam, you're gonna have to start pulling on this fabric a bit and your suit's gonna start to get a little twisted looking, but just keep pinning. So match up your side seams and pin. Just keep going along this leg opening. So here's, this is the bottom of the leg on the front. I'm gonna get those pinned together. So this whole leg opening is ready to go now. Your suit's gonna be laying a little funky at this point, which is why we're just gonna do the legs one side at a time. And in this seam, I like to include some elastic. You don't have to, but I like just to have that little bit of extra grip along the legs, just a little more security. Seems to help prevent wedgies a bit <laughs> if you include the elastic. So you can sew the fabric first if you want and then add the elastic, or if you're pretty comfortable with swim, you can just do it all in one step and I'll show you how, to, how I do that over on the machine. So I'm getting ready to sew the leg openings on the reversible swimsuit and I'm gonna include quarter inch elastic in my seam. You do need to use quarter inch elastic or the suit won't lay right when you're done. You can't use three eighths for this. So this is just clear elastic. You can also use like the quarter inch rubber swim elastic, or I've also seen uh, cotton swim elastic come in quarter inch as well. I'm just gonna sew this all on in one step, but if you're new to working with swim fabric and using elastic, you can sew your seam first and then go back and add the elastic, or you can just baste your fabric first. Whatever's easiest for you. Sometimes I do mess up doing this all in one step and then I wish I'd basted first. So, you know, live and learn. <laughs> so make sure you get your fabric like all the way in there. Sometimes it's a little hard to get the elastic to catch at first, but if you have a tiny bit of your seam that the elastic's not included in, it's not gonna be a problem right there at the beginning. So you like to go really slow initially and just make sure it grabs onto that elastic. So I can tell that it's grabbed onto it now because otherwise when I tug on this elastic, it would just pop right out. So that's honestly is the hardest part is just getting it started. So I'm just laying my elastic right on top of the fabric. You don't want to stretch it all um, as you sew it on. This pattern already has a lot of negative ease. Normally in swimsuit patterns, you'd be stretching the elastic as you sew it on, but you do not need to do that in this pattern. You just lay it right on there without stretching it. Okay, so the whole leg seam is sewn. I have the elastic included in there and it does not matter which side you lay the elastic on. It's a reversible swimsuit. It's not gonna matter. The elastic is gonna end up on the inside of the suit. The leg on this side of the swimsuit is finished. So now we're just gonna do the exact same thing on the other side of the suit. You have to kind of pull the fabric back around to get it lined up for the other leg. So here's 
my the bottom edge of the back of the suit same way we started before Let's start clipping in place match up side seams just like we did on the other side of the swimsuit so now that you've done it once it'll be nice and easy so I'm going to finish pinning this together and then go sew it just like I did on the other side of the swimsuit. Now that both of the leg openings are sewn, it's time to sew the crotch together. So you can find the back of the swimsuit and you're just gonna reach your hand up inside there and grab the front and pull it through. So here's the front. I'm just gonna grab that and bring it through. I'm gonna be turning the front like right side out as you pull it through. So here's the back of my suit and I am pulling the front through. So you want to make sure you don't have it twisted when you pull it through so make sure your prints match up. So here's my surf print to the surf print and stripes to stripes. And I'm just going to line everything up along the bottom edge and then go sew across that bottom edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. Now that we've sewn the front and back together on the crotch, we can turn it inside out. So you're gonna find the hole you left in the back neckline. If you forgot to leave a hole, you can seam up a little hole now. So here's my hole. I'm just gonna turn this right side out. Here comes my swimsuit. Almost done. So now the only thing we have left to do is top stitch along the neckline so that we can close this little gap in the fabric. So you just fold those edges to the inside. Make sure you have them all, all the raw edges in and then top stitch along the neckline. Now if you don't want to top stitch your swimsuit, if you don't like the look of top stitching, uh, which some people don't, or you just don't enjoy top stitching on swimsuit material, you can close this little seam, it's only like a two inch hole, using a ladder stitch instead, and you can just sew it up by hand. If you are top stitching instead, if you want, you can go ahead and do the neckline, you can also do the arms, and then you can top stitch the legs as well. You don't have to, but you can if you want to. So here's one side of our almost complete swimsuit. You can see we've got our cute yellow flutters, and then when we turn it around, just flip it. And since we use solid fabric from the flutters, you get to enjoy them from both sides of the swimsuit. So that's how you finish up the uh, one piece swimsuit and next I'm going to show you a couple little differences for making the tankini option. Assembly for the one piece suit and the two piece top are really similar. So I have this two piece top already all sewn together except for the one step that's different which is finishing the bottom edge. Uh, on your pattern, you're going to have a notch at the second back, at the center back. I forgot to cut that on mine, so I've just marked it with a clip. So to finish our hemline, we're going to grab one layer by that notch, or in my case, this clip. We're going to bring it up and around. So the suit's going to get turned inside out while you're doing this. And you're going to match it up with the notch on the other side. So you're going to have to pull this front piece down out of the way and you match up your two notches. Again, I forgot to cut my notch, so I'm matching up my clips. And then you're just going to start clipping along the edge. You want to make sure your side seams match up and just keep pinning all the way around. If you've ever sewn like an infinity scarf and had to finish the ends, it's Kind of similar to this. And just keep going and it's gonna you'll have to kind of pull out more fabric as you pin and it will get turned back inside itself but as you sew it 
Um, it's actually really not that hard to sew. I'm just following the straight edge. Now if you're doing the crop top length in the pattern, I do recommend including elastic in the seam just to make sure everything stays put even during active play. So I've gone all the way around now. So I'm just going to leave a little like inch and a half gap here in the back so I can turn it right side out. I'm going to go sew around this whole bottom edge. Sew it around the bottom edge of the top now so I can turn it right side out, this little gap I left. Just got this from top, turn it right side out here. And now the only thing you'll have left to do is to just tuck in the little edges down here from your hole. And you can either hand sew those shut or you can just top stitch all the way around the bottom edge. I like to top stitch just because it helps kind of keep the two layers of the swimsuit where they belong so they're not trying to, you know, ride up like this. So I'm just going to top stitch along the bottom edge of that. And then the top will be done, and there's just a few differences for doing the two-piece bottoms rather than the one-piece. So the first thing you'll do is sew the side seams in your two different fabrics. So I've already done that. This is my like accent fabric and my main fabric. And I'm also including the little leg flutters on this suit. And those are gathered the same way as the shoulder flutters that I already showed you with the one piece. And you attach them the same way. You base the gathered edge on, you center it over the side seam, and then there's markings on your patterns showing where the flutter should start and stop. And those are just suggestions. You can make your flutter, you know, more tightly gathered or spread it out a little more. It's up to you. So I have side seams done and flutters on. And now we're ready to do the legs. And doing the legs on the two piece is actually quite a bit easier than the one piece. So you'll have one piece inside out and one right side out, and then we're just going to slide them together. Just like this. And then you'll sew along the leg openings on both sides of the suit. So I like to match up my side seams first. Get those pinned together, and the flutter will be in between the two layers, and then you'll just keep pinning down the leg openings on both sides. And when we did the one piece, you had to kind of do one leg at a time, but with the two piece option, you can go ahead and pin both leg openings now if you want, and get them both sewn at the same time. So you're just going to sew along the front and down the back on both sides of the suit. I have the legs sewn and just like I showed you on the one piece, I did include the quarter inch elastic in the seam. So now we just need to finish the crotch and the waist. So you're going to turn the front of the swimsuit bottoms right side out. So this is the front, this is the back. So I have this little bit right here turned right side out and then you're going to stick it inside the back. So here's the two layers of the back, you can see with the notches, I'm just going to stick that in there. You can reach inside the suit to grab it. So here's the front that I'm pulling through. Here's the back. Make sure your prints are lined up and it's not twisted. So I'm lining up my flowers and my gingham. I'm just going to get those four layers lined up just like we did on the one piece. 
Line up those four layers and sew them together. The crotch is sewn together, so now we can turn it right side out. And now we just need to finish the waistline. And this is going to be very similar to how we finished the bottom edge of our swim top. So the back piece has a notch, so I'm going to flip it over so we can see the notch. So here's one of my notches. I'm going to pull this away from the other layer, bring it down and around, and the swimsuit's going to get turned inside out while I'm doing this. You need to match it up with the notch on the other side. So I've got my two notches matched up and the rest of the swimsuit's kind of folded up in between here. So I'm gonna match up the notches and then just keep pinning all the way around just like we did on the swim top. So I'm gonna match up side seams, make sure those are together. And then you're gonna have to pull just like we did before, you have to pull to get to the front half of the suit. So while you're sewing, you're going to just keep following this edge and you will have to stop and kind of pull the next part of the suit out so you can sew all the way around the edge. Here's my other side seam, and those together. Keep pulling and once you get comfortable with this you'll be able to kind of just match up a couple key points and then just sew all the way around. So I'm back to where I started. Here's my notches. So I'm going to sew this together. I am going to leave a gap here at the back for turning right side out. Here's my notch. I'm going to go get this sewn. So the waistline of the swim bottoms is another spot that I like to include elastic. You don't have to but it is a spot that I normally include it. So I'm gonna just lay the elastic right on top. And again, make sure you're using quarter inch elastic. And we do need to leave a little gap here at the back so we can turn it right side out. Sorry, I cut out there for a second. My camera battery died. So I'm just about to the end. I need to leave the inch and a half gap at the back. I'm going to go ahead and leave some extra elastic so I can still get that included in the entire waistline. So now that this is sewn, turn it right side out that little hole you left. And to finish up the bottoms, just need to top stitch around the, this is all the waistline. So you're going to tuck in the little edges here. And if you included the elastic, you can grab onto that end and make sure it gets included in the seam. I normally like to hold it down with like a glue stick or just really get that pinned in place and tuck your edges in and then you'll top stitch all the way around and I like to just use a zigzag stitch for the top stitching and after that your bottoms are all finished up.